Duracoat is a well-known farm finish, which is a two-part urethane paint that boasts no need for blasting or baking, making it consumer-friendly to both professionals and DIYers alike. It will be battling this. Originally made for automotive parts, Cerakote is held by many to be the only truly professional spray-on finish due to its demanding application process. Cerakote gains much of its durability from its ceramic additives, which is the same stuff that military body armor is made from. Gun Coat is Brunel's response to the growing firearm finish market. It is an epoxy-based paint that is cured by baking and boasts friction-reducing qualities from its molybdenum disulfate additive. Gun Coat may not have as much attention from gun enthusiasts, but it certainly is no slouch. While not originally developed as a firearm finish, Rattle Cam Paint has certainly become the lion's shareholder in spray-on firearm finishes. Used by soldiers and farmers alike, Rattle Cam Paint may not be the most fancy, but it certainly has staked a substantial claim in the firearm finish market. These 2 by 3 inch squares will be used as our test subjects. Aluminum oxide is used as a blasting media to remove any debris and give the metal the best possible surface for the paint to adhere to. After the parts are done being blasted, they need to be cleaned of the dust from blasting. A wipe down with acetone removes the bulk of the dust. The parts are then soaked for 45 minutes in acetone to remove any oils from the pores of the metal. The parts are then baked to ensure that there are no signs of any oils. And if any oil can be seen after baking, the parts will need to be re-soaked in acetone before painting. After blowing the parts off, they can finally be painted and cured by baking if needed. Firearms are exposed to a plethora of chemicals. This test simulates some of them. First is the ever-common denature of alcohol. Secondly is its tougher cousin, acetone. Third is the popular break-free CLP. Fourth is Butch's Borshine. And fifth is brake parts cleaner. The Krylon proved weaker than a cup of caffeine-free coffee, failing every chemical test. The Duracoat fared better, only failing on the acetone and brake parts cleaner, proving itself a worthy adversary. The gun coat reacted to the chemicals about as much as a pig to a salad. Nothing. In fact, the chemicals seemed to run right off the finish. The Cerakote proved itself as tough as body armor. It shrugged off every chemical that I tested on it. I could almost hear it laughing right in my face. This Frankenstein monster of a contraption is nothing more than a scribe affixed to a fulcrum with incremental weights. This is pretty much the worst case scenario for finishes. The first victim is Rattle Cam Paint. The thick application of between two and three thousandths may be its saving grace, but after only 55 grams, the Rattle Cam Paint is hurting, and after only 165 grams, bare metal can be seen. Duracoat is trusted by many to be exceptionally strong. It handles the 55 and 110 gram weights with only minor surface wear. The Duracoat finally gave up at 250 grams, showing bare metal from the scry. If there was ever an underdog, Gun Coat may well be it. Aside from its almost mirror-like finish, it performed well above my expectations, flying through the 55, 110, 250, and 500 gram weights. After 750 grams, Gun Coat finally wore through, only just exposing bare metal. Last but certainly not least is Cerakote. It handled the 55, 110, and 250 gram weights without even getting a bloody nose. Finally, the 500 gram weight left a minor scuff. Annoyed, I placed a 900 gram weight on it. It finally threw in the towel and exposed the metal underneath. Cerakote was so strong that it nearly killed Frankenstein's monster. With such a labor-intensive application process, 
Sarah Code is not within everyone's financial reach. For my money, Gun Code is the winner, with its only drawback being its need for baking to cure. And if you're painting a rifle, you're gonna need a big oven. <laughs>